Hello and welcome back to the Medic wall plugin. Um, this is Nathan Wilkerson and today I just wanted to go into generating uh, wall panels in a little bit of detail. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video fairly short so uh, it doesn't run over too long. Um, let's start first of all with a the wall toolbar and you can see up here on the top um, we've added since added the garage door uh, tool as well as the estimating uh, tool. So to begin with, um, usually what I like to explain to people is that when you're drawing walls, um, we've just created the new HTML draw uh, menu here. And the first thing you need to know about this is you don't need to close this menu to start drawing walls. You kind of want to actually probably leave this wall menu open. And if you change any of the variables or parameters here, you're going to want to hit update and then that will make any of these uh, parameters live. So our already right now the defaults are live. You don't have to hit update. If you start drawing you can see that um, you basically have these updates. And, and the other thing to note too is basically this wall uh, tool is in polyline mode by default. So you can see it's, it's asking, you know, prompting me kind of for the next panel that come, goes in succession. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. And of course you can go on any angle that you want, or you can go straight. Um, so, <clears throat> and, and now let's say that I want to start a new bunch of segments, uh, but I don't want to jump out of the wall tool. What you can do on Windows, and I'm not exactly sure on uh, Mac what you do, but on Windows you just hit the escape key, and I just did that. Now the wall tool is actually still active. So you can go and start drawing a bunch more segments. Um, so I'm going to start. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a, a couple more segments here. And you notice how automatically the corners are being configured for you. But that's because we have the auto corner configuration turned on. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the escape key again, and I'm going to show you that we can draw just a single wall panel, and hit escape, and then go over here and draw another single wall panel and hit escape. Okay, so you can basically, yes it is in polyline mode, but what you can do is hit the escape key in between uh, picking points and that will basically put you kind of into uh, just line mode, single wall panel mode. Um, the benefit of that is of course you don't have to keep hitting the uh, icon up here to start the draw wall tool. Uh, the other thing is, is, let's say now you want to do some interior walls, so we'll go ahead and select interior we're going to go two by four studs, and then we go ahead and hit update. Okay, and I'm just kind of throwing random walls out here for people to just look at. Um, not really putting them inside anywhere. Now, now of course we're drawing some interior walls. And the difference between an interior wall and an exterior wall, of course, is the interior wall has <coughs> gypsum on both sides rather than cladding and siding. Okay, and um, you know you can keep going or do whatever you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the space bar now, and that will terminate the entire draw wall session. So now you can see we're back to the regular tool. Okay, so there's some walls. <coughs> now the one thing I want to make very clear to everybody is that when you are drawing walls, there's always a start and an end to each wall panel. And the rule is, is that basically this wall has a start on the left side and an end on the right side and then that's what, when you're looking at it from the exterior and again <coughs> basically uh, these interior walls also technically have an exterior as well and that exterior is you know even though they look the same it, it does have a, a, an exterior um, so basically if you look at this and you can tell that by well, you can orient yourself with regards to the whatever is exterior and interior on a wall panel simply by looking at the label, if you have the labels turned on. And so if you're looking at this wall panel, you can, you can know that this is the side is the exterior and this side is the interior, and so that means this is the start and this is the end of the wall panel. Now, why is all this important? Well, if you go ahead and let's start that wall draw tool up again, as soon as we pick a point, and you see we're trying to place a wall panel. Notice that dark black line. 
So that dark black line is the exterior wall side. Okay, it'll always be the exterior wall side. So if you want to go ahead and wrap around the perimeter of a foundation, um, basically you need to wrap around it going uh, counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and just uh, go back to interior exterior for a second. Let's go back to 2x6 walls so I can demonstrate that a little better. So for instance now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a little bit longer wall panel here so we can demonstrate some other things. Um, so, <coughs> so I'm going counterclockwise around the perimeter of my building. And, and be best practice, I think, is to actually draw your outer perimeter first and then start putting your interior walls. And I'll explain in here in a second why that's uh, important. So now, like, let's say I don't have a grid turned on and I want to get right uh, in line with that. And, you know, of course, I'm extending out. And how do I know how to match that length? Well, what you can do is you can hit your shift key while you are got this uh, extended here on the red line or red axis. Now you can see that it's it's glued to that red axis. And you can put out an extension line right to this. Um, let me here. Let's turn it over here and demonstrate really well. Okay, so now I just line up right here on this other member, and you can see that it, boom, it's right in line. Okay, so now we want to close out this structure. So <coughs> some people have asked, well, do I put, do I put it right here? Do I put it right there? The key thing to remember is that, as far as the wall uh, is concerned or the plugin is concerned, <coughs> the outside corners are what it's detecting as the corner. Uh, the you know basically the actual zero zero point of that wall panel. So right here is a start, a left corner of a wall panel, and this is the zero zero. So you want to stick it right here on the outer corner of the framing, not here, not here, right there. And if you do that, and then we'll just hit space to jump out, it will be perfectly lined up, and it'll take care of your all your corner configurations. Okay, so there we go. Um, Again, I went counterclockwise around the outer perimeter, and all my corners are all configured nicely. Everything looks good. Um, that basically is, you know, the the, the underpinnings of the whole plugin. Um, a couple things now about editing wall panels. Um, <coughs> so, you can edit a wall panel by clicking up here and selecting your wall panel. Okay, and you're going to get your edit menu. But on the other hand, you can. It, it may be more convenient. Some people just like to right-click on it, and you can see it'll say "Edit Wall Assembly" there in the context menu, and you get the same thing. Okay, so either way, you can edit a wall panel. <coughs> um, let's go jump into now dropping some doors and windows in. Um, very simple. I'm just going to do without the advanced options. We'll go into more advanced options on these later. Without the advanced options turned on, all it's going to do is cut holes in the wall. It's not going to put doors or casing and trim. If I do turn on the advanced door options or advanced window options, it will put the door in. You know, potentially it has the option to install the door, put trim in, put casing in, all that sort of thing. So let's just go ahead and cut a few holes here. So, so now you know you can see I'm 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 moving across this, and I can place that door anywhere I like. Okay. And I have the header uh, parameter turned on in the global settings, so it's showing not only the door size, but it's also showing the header size. So I can turn that off optionally. <coughs> Let me show you something else about this. Um, so right now it's going to the center of the door. If you want to toggle it so it's going to either side, hit um, your control key in Windows. Now I'm going to the left side, hit it again. Now I'm going to the right side, so you can toggle which side uh, you want to talk, you know, you want to be on the side of that door. Spacebar again jumps you out. Let's go ahead and throw a window in there. Just go ahead at the defaults. Um, again, same thing here. Hit the control key. Hit the control key again. Hit the control key again. It's back to center. Okay, same thing. Okay, let's go ahead and throw a garage door in. Um, garage door. Uh, this time around, let's, well, let's go ahead and just do one without uh, any advanced options. Again, it's just going to cut a hole. And you can see that 
there's your garage door. Let's go ahead and turn off the gypsum on the inside. Okay, and you can see all the layers here, of course. So it's, it, we're dropping everything on certain layers. Now you can change that up in the global settings. I think we've actually covered that though in a previous video, so, video, so we won't do that here today. Uh, new addition, of course, are the new wall labels. This this is on dimension layer three. You can turn those labels, toggle them on and off. You can also turn them off totally in the global settings. Um, Dimension layer 2 has the more framing details, so if you want to turn off all these uh, header uh, notations, you can do that with the turning off dimension layer 2. Let's just leave them on for now. Um, and now just to demonstrate the garage door thing, let's go ahead and let's turn on the advanced options. And there's a lot of options, of course, with these garage doors. And we're not going to do a portal frame right now. Let's just go ahead and go with those basic options. And the trim and the casing and the type of door. Now let's go to the default. And so now, bingo, there's your door. Okay, so the cool thing to note about this is you're getting the casing on the inside. Now, the casing for garage doors is this uh, setup here, which allows you to install your hardware uh, for your roll up door. If we turn off the garage door, uh, here somewhere, wall door. Okay, so there we've turned it off. You can kind of see better what's going on with um, the way we have the casing set up, uh, ra wrapping around the garage. Um, let me go ahead. I kind of zoomed out there too quick. <coughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that off. It's kind of a new feature that we just added a couple weeks ago. So you got your garage door. We can look here. You got your weather strip and your everything's there as it should be. And of course, all of this can be edited. These openings. Let's demonstrate that real quick. You click the edit opening, and there's really no other way right now to edit openings. But this edit openings will edit windows, doors, and garage doors. So you'll notice it highlights. You just kind of have to mouse over these openings, and it will highlight and allow you to. Um, Sorry, that jumped over to my other screen. And you can go ahead and, and change anything up here. So let's say we want to hit that garage door width, change it to an 8 foot garage, 96 inches. Okay. And you notice the panels here are auto up, they're set on auto, I think, right now. Yeah, auto. You know, if you don't like three panels, it's just setting that. You can always change that. The horizontal panels. Um, Let's go to four on that and see what happens. Yeah, so see now we can bump that up. And the same with this. I think we're at auto, and let's say we want to go five panels. Okay, so anyways, you can you, you can really customize the look and feel of your garage doors really to your heart's content. Um, you know, if you want to add in door hardware, um, you know, you can set put a little handle in there if you like. It's kind of cool. Um, and also, if you'll notice that these um, in the plugin folder itself, I have basically m empty spaces for these other styles of hardware, and you can go ahead and add your own hardware into the plugin folder libraries, and then it will automatically load those um, those hardwares when you select them. So, anyways, this video is uh, already getting kind of long, so I just wanted to give you a quick overview of creating walls and some of the really um, I guess a, a few of the details that I think are important. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the edit wall function one more time. And right here. Okay, so with regards to wall, the walls themselves, um, again, there's a lot of options. Generally speaking, the corner, wall corner start, wall corner end, you don't need, it, need to mess with this too much because the auto corner configuration uh, algorithm is, is is dealing with this but once in a while you may need to set this corner offset to something else or you may want to you know change up California corners to nothing uh, again this uh, typically you don't need to mess with this in here <clears throat> or maybe you want to have more than one corner stud okay so uh, all, uh, the main thing is, is all this is parametric you can change it up uh, as much as you like in fact I'm going to just turn off the cladding for a second um, just to 
demonstrate that and turn the sheathing off. Okay, so let's go back to this wall here. Okay, so we've got a wall and it's an inside. You'll notice that the inset outside corner, so it's an inset outside corner. Um, let's go to this wall right here and let's edit it real quick. So I'm going to just, just to demonstrate, I'm going to change to on the start, I'm going to set it to two studs. Hit update. Okay, now you noticed that I've got two studs here on the corner instead of one, and it bumped out my California corner. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of the California corner. And you can see there it goes. It's not there anymore. And of course, I can set that for both the start and the end. And again, this end is the, uh, the right, and the start is the left of the wall looking at it from the exterior um, and then of course we've got uh, hold downs we've got blocking let's turn on the blocking I mean it, it, the list goes on and on what customizations you can set and of course when you do blocking this opens and you don't if you don't want to stagger the blocking hit no and it'll straighten them out or it'll stagger them um, we got all sorts of trim options that you can use there's exterior wainscoting options Let's turn a, go ahead and turn the exterior wainscoting on. Um, sure, brick's fine. Okay, so uh, we need to turn that layer on, of course. So we're going to turn the cladding. And cladding, external, exterior wainscoting is on the cladding layer. So let's just turn back on all our layers here. And you can see that, um, you know, of course we need to enable it on this wall as well. But... Um, yeah, that gets into a whole nother level of complication, I guess. <coughs> and if you look, there's a whole bunch of options. And you can offset um, the start and the end of the wainscoting itself, um, you know, to different different values. So let's do that, just to try that out. Okay, so now you see we, we, we've made it stop, or start 24 inches from the corner of the wall. And you can do that same sort of thing over here. And there's a bunch of various modes, and I'm not going to get into the modes. This is going to require a whole nother video just to explain wainscoting and all the various modes. But bottom line is, um, there's a whole lot of detail here with walls, and we're going to need a lot of um, videos, I guess, to explain it all. Uh, I'm not going to get into presets either right now, but basically, if, if this particular wall, with the way it's set up, that's what you want for pre, you know future walls, uh, hit your save button go ahead put um, a name in there try to keep your name simple don't get overly excited with putting colons and stuff in there but I'm not sure you know what that might cause you um, and then hit save wall preset okay and now you'll notice that that's in the drop down box now if I come along here I'm going to go ahead and close this I'm going to go ahead and draw another section of wall um, I'm going to load up that preset. First you grab it, hit load. Okay, and it loads the wall preset into the menu. Okay, now it doesn't mean it's actually made it active. It just means it's loaded up. So now you have that preset. Hit update, and that makes it active. And eventually I might probably combine those two steps. So right now, basically it's kind of a three-step process. You select your preset, you hit load and it loads in the HTML menu and then you hit update so that it makes it live okay so now we're live with it and if we go ahead and draw a segment of wall you can see that it drew exactly as we had saved that previous set of parameters in fact even saving the um, 24 inch offset for the, uh, for the exterior wainscoting anyways um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell um, next time I think we'll go into more into doors and windows and how to configure those. So uh, if you have any questions, give me a call or send me an email. I'm always here working on the plugin pretty much uh, every day now. And uh, I'd be more than excited to take any questions or feedback from you guys. So thank you.